Hello, I'm Joe Silvera, and along with Anat, we are teachers and owners of the Silvera Jewelry School in Berkeley, California. Today, we're going to look at lost wax casting and summarize the basic process. With lost wax casting, you start with a wax model and end up with a finished metal casting. Let's see how. First, you make your wax models. These are exact replicas of what you want in a finished metal casting. They get sprued to a base so that they can be surrounded with special high temperature investment which will form this first mold. During the burnout, the wax will be melted out and the void will then be filled later with metal. But first you have to start by sprueing all of your models into a little system, kind of like a tree, with the trunk coming up from the base which is the button and then going out to the branches which are the sprues and at the end of the branches are your models. This is the steel flask that goes over it to hold the investment in place. Let's see the next step. Now we're going to invest our wax models. So first we're going to spray some, in, some spray debubbleizer on there. This helps to keep air bubbles from sticking to the models which will turn into balls of metal when you cast. So we put the flask back on and we get ready to mix the plaster investment. So this is what is going to hold our models together during the burnout and later keep the void together so that we can fill it with metal. Here I have carefully measured some water and the right amount of investment and I'm mixing it in a rubber bowl. You have only about nine and a half minutes to complete this before the plaster is in the wrong state and almost hardened and so you cannot pour it around your pieces. First we mix it a little bit by hand, and then we have to remove all the lumps so that it's a smooth mix, so we're going to do that with a simple egg beater mixer. Now we vacuum the investment before pouring it so that we get as many of the air bubbles out as possible. So this is called a investment machine. Once this pressure hits about 25 and above, then it will start to froth and the air bubbles will start to come up to the surface. Hitting the table and vibrating it will help the air bubbles to come up. Now, after a couple minutes, we release the pressure and we can pour the investment over our models. So, I have three flasks here ready to go, and now I'm going to pour the investment over them. The tape is so that in the next step, when I vacuum it again, that the uh, plaster doesn't overflow. When you pour, Try to pour down the side of the flask so that you don't encourage more air bubbles to form on the models like inside of openings or cavities. Now we have to vacuum the air bubbles again just in case we form some so we're going to put it back into the vacuum machine. And again, vibrating the table once it reaches the correct pressure can help to release the air bubbles. Here we're done after another couple of minutes of vacuuming. So we re release the pressure, turn off the timer, and now they have to sit and cure for about two hours before we put them into the kiln for burnout. The flasks will go into the kiln and burn out over 10 and a half hours. They will slowly ramp up to the correct temperature and this will melt out all the wax leaving the void for us to cast our metal into. Well it's about 11 hours later and now we're winding up the centrifuge for casting. So you wind it four times around and then set the pin. And this has been carefully balanced so that the weight of the flask and the weight of the crucible and the weights on the other end are balanced so that there's no vibration when you throw the metal. 
So now I am melting the metal in the crucible. When the metal becomes molten and looks like quicksilver, then we are going to be ready to put in the flask. So this metal looks ready to go and beautiful. So now I'm going to get the flask and load it in the centrifuge. You take it out of the kiln and place it carefully in the cradle holder and then line it up with the crucible. Just making sure that the metal is still molten and clean and now we are going to release the centrifuge and spin the metal into place. So the centrifuge makes it easy to accurately throw the metal into the mold and the spinning keeps it in place while the metal is molten. So now that it has spun for a couple of minutes, I'm going to slow it down and remove the flask so that we can see the button. The only part that you can see right now of the casting, the bit at the end. That is the button on the end of the flask. And it's very hot right now. Let's see how hot it is. So I'm going to place it in a dark place so you can see the color. And that's how hot the metal is right now. So we don't want to quench the mold while it's this hot. We want to let it go down below red heat before we quench it. Now we're going to quench it in water, which will remove the plaster and release the metal models from this mold. So this mold, the plaster mold, the investment mold, is destroyed every time you do a casting. Later, you can make rubber molds of your castings to then make reproductions. So first we will remove the flask, clean it off a little bit. And now let's find those models that fell out. So most of the plaster will have just dissolved off from the intensity of the heat on the metal and the water. And there are our metal models. Time to remove the models from the sprues. Here I'm using special pliers that can cut through 10 gauge sprues. And now I have some thicker sprues to cut, so I'm going to use these sprue cutters. So these will cut through some of the thicker sprues, like so. Any thicker sprues can be sawn off. Now you have to grind off the little nub of the sprue, so I'm using this little grinder made of separation disc to carefully get back to the model. And then I want to remove the marks from the grinder. So I'm going to use a white silicone polishing wheel to smooth the surface and get rid of the grinder marks so that it's ready for mass finishing. And this is what it looks like after polishing with the white silicone wheel. I use a tumbler loaded with mixed shapes of stainless steel shot to burnish all of my models for easy polishing. So let's take a look at some pieces that we're going in another batch here. These are some silver rings and the shot just burnishes the surface and takes it up to a nice shine with no abrasion, so no metal loss. This is a good first step for polishing uh, and if the models are in good shape, they'll produce a nice finish like these. So these are some models after casting and after having been polished. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation and thanks for watching.